This is chapter 13, alcohols, phenols, thiols, and ethers. Section 1 is alcohols, phenols, and thiols. Alcohols, phenols, and thiols are organic compounds with oxygen or sulfur containing functional groups. And you'll see, as with alkenes and alkynes, when we have one of these functional groups in the molecule, the ending of the name changes. In this section, we're going to learn how to write the IUPAC names for these substances as well as the structures for them. Alcohols are organic compounds containing an OH functional group. This is called the hydroxyl group. You can see it here in this three-dimensional structure as the red oxygen sphere connected to a white hydrogen. This is an example of ethanol because it has two carbons, so the prefix eth still applies. Phenols we've already seen when we discussed aromatic benzenes. Phenols are benzene rings that have a hydroxyl group attached to them. So in a sense, they're a special kind of alcohol. And you can see here the OH group again. Thiols are similar to alcohols, but they contain an SH group instead of an OH group. So here you can see the SH group with the sulfur atom drawn in this yellow color. This one is also has an eth prefix because it's two carbons, but now that it's a thiol, instead of calling it ethanol, we call it ethane thiol. Naming alcohols is pretty simple. You just determine the name of the parent alkane chain that the OH group is attached to, and then you replace the E at the end of that name with an OL to indicate an alcohol group. So for instance, methane, CH4, becomes methanol when you add an OH group to replace one of those hydrogens. For ethane, you have two carbons in a chain, and that becomes ethanol when you replace one of the hydrogens on one of the carbons with an OH group. For alcohols with three or more carbon atoms, you need to include a number to give the location of the OH group. And this works the same way that it did with the double bonds, triple bonds, and other substituents. Also, we have alcohols that sometimes have two OH groups, and these are called diols. You'd require two numbers for the diol, or you could even have three OH groups, and that would be a triol. And so you would have three numbers indicating the triol. So some examples we have here are 1-propanol, where you have a propane chain and the OH group attached to the first carbon. Remember, this is the first carbon because it's the carbon that contains the hydroxyl group, or is closest to the hydroxyl substituent. If the hydroxyl group were written on the other side, on this carbon, then that carbon would be numbered 1. In this example, you still have a prop propane chain, three carbons, but now the OH is attached to the middle carbon. And so no matter which end you start counting from, the middle carbon is always going to be carbon number two in propane. And so this is two propanol. You'll see these common names in parentheses below a lot of the names that we're learning, uh, but you're not responsible for learning any of the common names in this course. Here we see an example of a diol. You have a butane chain that's four carbons and it has an OH on this last carbon and the second to last carbon, or I should say the first carbon and then the next carbon. You start numbering at the end closest to the most substituents or functional groups. So this carbon would be one, this would be two, three, and then four. So one OH is on the one carbon, another is on the two carbon, and so we call this one, two butane diol. We can also have a hydroxyl group on a cyclic alkane, in which case we have a cyclic alcohol. Those are named analogous to cyclic alkanes. You just add cyclo to the front of the alcohol name. You have to be very careful, though, to make sure that you don't confuse cyclohexane with phenol. Remember, without the double bonds or the ring in the middle, this is just cyclohexane. It's all single bonds. It's an alkane, not an alkene or an aromatic. So this is cyclohexanol, whereas if I added the circle in, then we would be dealing with phenol. Either way, if there are no other substituents and the hydroxyl is the only one, then we don't need a number. Okay? With one OH group, all the positions are the same, and so we can just call this cyclohexanol. Same way we did when we had a simple halogen substituent on a cycloalkane. However, when we add another substituent, like then, we also have to start uh, numbering. We still don't need the one because the OH group, being the most important functional group in this molecule, is still considered to be on the one carbon, always, but now you would want to number or count the shortest distance to the next substituent, which in this case is a methyl group. So here we would have 2-methyl cyclopentanol. 
Phenols we learned a little bit about when we were talking about aromatics. And so again, the idea here is you just have a benzene ring with a hydroxyl attached to it. If that's the only substituent, then no numbering system is necessary. You never need to indicate the one for the position of the OH on phenol. It's always just going to be phenol and then a, a substituent that may have a number uh, in addition to that. So here we see the chloro group in addition to the hydroxyl. So it's phenol with the chloro group here. We would start with the one at the position of the hydroxyl group always and then count the shortest distance. And so that's how you get the three here for three chlorophenol. Again, ignore the common names in parentheses down here for this course. So that's three chlorophenol. This is an ethyl group at the one, two, three, four position. So it's four ethyl phenol. This is a methyl group at the one, two, three position. And so that's three methyl phenol. Remember, you're not always counting clockwise though. So if I have another phenol or phenol, I should say, and the methyl group is here, I would still begin with the OH being on the first carbon, but then I would count the shortest distance and I would still get three methyl phenol. In other words, this molecule is the same as this one, just rotated at 180 degrees. So what's the name of this structure? Well, the first thing we always have to do is identify any important functional groups, any double bonds, triple bonds, and now we're looking for hydroxyl groups or phenols or thiols. We're going to add to this list as we go on to the next few chapters. So here we see a hydroxyl group, which makes this an alcohol. So now I need to find the longest carbon chain that this hydroxyl group is attached to. It's pretty easy in this case. It's just this chain. Even if we were to count, uh, you know, turn up and count this instead, then it would give us the same number of carbons. So there's no need to do that. So how many carbons do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. That makes this hexanol. But we need to indicate where the OH group is. Now, notice we have a methyl group that's one carbon away from this end and an OH group that's one carbon away from this end. So which do we choose? Which end do we number from? Well, the functional group, the important functional group that gives the compound the ending is always the one that takes priority. So we're going to start counting from this carbon closest to the OH group. That makes this 2, this 3, this 4, this 5, and this 6. So that means that the hydroxyl group is on carbon number 2, and so this is really 2 hexanol. It also lets us see that the methyl group here is on carbon number 5, and so it's 5-methyl-2-hexanol. Let's do a couple of other examples. Here we have an OH, which is attached to this four carbon chain. The OH is on the very end carbon, so we would start counting with that as number one. This would be two, this would be three, and this would be four, right? And so now it is one butanol, but prefix, well, not prefix, but root because it has four carbons. Four means but. Uh, the butane changes to an OL ending because there's an alcohol attached to it, and that alcohol is attached to the very first carbon, so it's one butanol. And then here we have a methyl group on the three carbon, so we add a prefix 3-methyl-1-butanol. Again, I'll try and make sure it's clear that this is a 1 and not an L. So 3-methyl-1-butanol is the name of this compound. For this one, we have to be careful. We have a hydroxyl group, but we don't want to accidentally call this cyclohexanol or something like that. This is a benzene ring that the hydroxyl is attached to, which means this whole thing is really phenol. And this is a bromo substituent. So remember that we always count the carbon that the OH group in phenol is attached to as the first carbon, and then we're going to count the shortest distance this way. So this would be two, and this would be three. So it's three bromo phenol. Again, no number for the OH group because we always assume the OH and phenol is on the one carbon. Alcohols and phenols are found in a lot of common commercial products. Methanol, for example, the simplest alcohol is found in a lot of solvents and paint removers. Uh, it's also a common byproduct of the fermentation process to produce ethanol, drinking alcohol, although it only occurs in very minute quantities. 
uh, and it's metabolized in the body into formaldehyde and formic acid, which can be very dangerous. They can uh, attack the optic nerve and cause blindness and headaches and even death in relatively small doses. Ethanol is drinking alcohol. This is the alcohol present in things like beer and wine, and this has been known since prehistoric times. It's formed from fermentation of different carbohydrates, such as grains, sugars, starches, uh, according to a chemical equation similar to this one. And it's also used in a lot of other applications, such as the solvent for perfumes or varnishes, and even in some medicines, like in a tincture of iodine, is really a solution of iodine crystals dissolved into alcohol, ethanol. A common diol that you might have come across is 1,2-ethane diol. This is commonly known as ethylene glycol, and this is a big component in antifreeze used in heating and cooling systems. This is, like the other alcohols, also sometimes used as a solvent for paints, inks, plastics, as the formation of synthetic fibers and things like that. Um, but like other alcohols, especially methanol, it's extremely toxic to the body. It gets oxidized into oxalic acid, which forms insoluble salts in the kidneys that can cause renal damage and eventually convulsions and death. So it's a very toxic substance. As far as phenols, one that you might have heard of is bisphenol A, otherwise known as BPA. And you can see the structure for it down here. It's actually two phenol groups attached to the central carbon in a propane chain. Uh, and this is used to make polycarbonate, which is a clear plastic that's used for a lot of bottles, including uh, commercially available baby bottles. Um, but washing these kinds of bottles with certain detergents or at high temperatures has been found to disrupt the polymer, the plastic, and cause uh, small pieces of BPA to leach into the liquid contained in them. Uh, and so this has been found to be a health hazard, and so a lot of times you'll see bottles, especially baby bottles or children's uh, plastic toys and things like that, that are labeled as BPA-free. Remember that the benzene ring was called an aromatic because it was originally one of the components derived from certain herbs and spices. And so we can see here examples of benzene derivatives, in this case phenols, that have been derived from sources like nutmeg, thyme, cloves, and vanilla. So these chemical compounds that you see here are partially responsible for the aromas of these substances. Now we come to thiols. Thiols are analogous to alcohols, but instead of an OH group, they have an SH group. Chemically, they behave similarly in certain situations because, again, sulfur is right below oxygen on the periodic table, so they have some similar chemistry. Um, but thiols in particular have a very strong and often a very unpleasant odor. Uh, in fact, thiols are part of the um, components that give cheese, onion, garlic, and oysters their particular smell. Uh, and in fact, it, thiols are also added to natural gas fuel to make it easier to detect leaks. Natural gas itself, which is mostly methane, doesn't really have an odor naturally. And so if there were a gas leak in your house, you wouldn't be able to notice it. If thiols are added to give it an unpleasant smell so that you can notice it in even small amounts. Here you can also see an example of trans-2-butene-1-thiol. This is a thiol that's present in the spray that skunks produce as a defense mechanism. So here we can see the structures of some of these thiols that have the characteristic odors that we were talking about. So methane thiol here uh, has a, an odor that is produced from oysters, cheddar cheese, onions, and garlic. Uh, garlic also contains two propene, one thiol, that's this one down here. Uh, notice that in this structure, the thiol is given precedence, and so the carbon that the thiol group is attached to is labeled number one, and so we say that the double bond begins on the two carbon in this case. For our purposes, we're not really going to ask you to name compounds that have two important functional groups like this because there are rather complicated rules for deciding which one takes priority that we don't want to get into. So for our purposes, you would only see you would only have to name a compound that has either a thiol or an alkene. But obviously they can be together, and here's an example of that. Uh, a simpler thiol would be something like one propane thiol, which is also uh, partially responsible for the odor of onions, as well as the uh, propensity for onions to make you tear up when you're cutting them. It's a lacrimator, causes you to cry. Thiols are named similar to many of these other compound types, like alcohols, 
except instead of dropping the E and adding OL to the end, uh, you simply add thiol. You don't even drop the E. So for instance, with methane, if you replace a hydrogen with an SH group, it just becomes methane thiol. For longer chains, you might need a number. So in this case, for instance, you have one, two, three, four, five carbons in a row. So that makes it pentane thiol. The thiol group is attached to the very first carbon, so we would call it one pentane thiol. And then if this is one, then this is two, and this is three, so this methane group or methyl group here would be three methyl. And so we get three methyl, one pentane thiol. Here we have a three carbon chain that's propane. You would start numbering from either end and get the same answer. So the thiol group is on the second carbon, and so this is two propane thiol. Again, you don't drop the E, you leave the E in and you just tack thiol onto the end. In this case, we have a cyclic alkane, four carbons is butane, so that makes this cyclobutane. Since the thiol is the only substituent, we don't need the number. All the positions are equivalent and we can just call this cyclobutane thiol. No number necessary. So now that we know how to name alcohols, phenols, and thiols, let's take a look at uh, drawing some structures from names. So this first example is 2-chlorocyclopentanol. So first you should look at the end and you'll see that this is just a regular alcohol. It has an OH group due to that OL ending. You can also see that it has five carbons in the chain, but also make sure that you recognize that it has cyclo, which means it's not a straight chain or an open chain. It's five carbons in a closed figure. So that would be like a pentagon. And then since it's cyclopentanol, you can just put the OH anywhere. Once you put that OH in, that means that this carbon it's attached to has to be carbon number one. And then since I'm drawing the structure, I can count either way to carbon number two. So I'll call it this one. And then that's where my chlorine group goes. So this is a molecule of 2-chlorocyclopentanol. For B, we have 4-methyl-1-hexane-thiol. So this time we have a thiol group at the end, and it's attached to a hexane chain. There's no cyclo, so it's a, an open-ended chain. This is 6 carbons long, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's one hexane thiol, which means the thiol group is on the first carbon. Uh, I'm going to draw it here at the end on this side and just start counting from there. So that would be my first carbon. This would be two, this would be three, this would be four, this would be five, and this would be six. And so I need to put a methyl group on the fourth carbon. That's down here. So I just draw a line indicating the methyl group. And then I can get rid of my numbers. And so there's four methyl, one hexane thiol.